Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A traveling band of thieves that was in the spotlight months ago appears to be back at work. They're targeting high-end homes when the owners go out of town. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skilly. The last time we heard about this, the losses were a million dollars a week, and the heist seemed to be getting more sophisticated. Well, now the Oakland County Sheriff putting out a new warning. Rod Maloney has the story from Bloomfield Hills. Owning a home on a fairway on one of Metro Detroit's world famous golf courses is a signal that you've arrived financially. But it also can mean in this environment that you have a target on your back and that perhaps going out of town is not a good idea. We think there was at least three to four uh, incursions of the groups in Oakland County in the last four to five days. The security video we've seen over the past six months is chilling enough. Unencumbered and well-equipped thieves knock out glass doors, disable the alarm system, and unconcerned, easily and frankly quite loudly slide a half-ton safe down a flight of stairs before carrying it off in a rental car. They come in teams with backpacks. Each backpack has a different tool set. Some are the breaching tools, some are the electronics to jam alarm systems. Very quick, sophisticated actions. Local, state, and federal officers went to work and put enough pressure on these thieves to head elsewhere. Yet they've cycled back from L.A., New York, Tennessee, and Ohio now, and more efficient than ever. Bouchard says the last group of alleged thieves arrested received training in Chile, and they're roving with dozens of others. Now we know we have teams from Colombia, and uh, New York intelligence has teams, uh, like criminal gangs from Venezuela now. They rent hotel rooms, Airbnbs, apartments, carrying multiple disposable IDs in case they get arrested. Bouchard says if you're leaving your home empty and quiet for a while. If you have an alarm, use it. Try to get your devices hardwired. Try to have redundancy of communication. Now, what ends up happening here is that they're using very sophisticated electronics like trail cameras, putting trackers on your car. Also, they're doing this, he says, against snowbirds. So say you want to be in the in the uh, warm weather in the winter months. Well, guess what happens? Your house is left alone. They're watching. And in fact, he also says that people should be on the lookout for slow rolling people looking at houses, particularly if you know your neighbor is not going to be around for a while. And he says that if you see something like that, a drone for for instance, or that trail camera, call the sheriff's office. He'd rather or much rather have 100 false alarms than miss the one where somebody gets hit really hard by this. Uh, exactly right, Rod. And with a lot of spring break travel right now, exactly. a lot of a lot of people so gone. People yeah. 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 All right, Rod. All right, a fugitive arrest in Warren did not go as smoothly as U.S. Marshals had hoped, leaving three of them with minor injuries. State police say the Detroit Fugitive Apprehension Team was making an arrest near the day's end on Van Dyke near 14 Mile. Three marshals were dragged as the suspect tried to get away. Shots were fired, but no one was hit. The suspect's car slammed into another vehicle, pushing it through the wall of a room at the end. The officers have various rash injuries from being dragged. No one else was hurt, and the suspect is in custody. A grieving family in a battle with their late mother's insurance company. While they should be focused on making end-of-life arrangements, they are instead spending hours making calls and so far getting nowhere. They called Help Me Hank to come to the rescue. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester live tonight. You can understand why this is so concerning for so many, Hank. Yeah, Devin, I mean, this is really the last thing this family needs to deal with right now. And once we heard their story and knew the pain they were experiencing, we knew that we had to help. We're supposed to be grieving, not uh, having a grievance. With this an insurance is, company. This is not time for a grievance. Yeah. It's time for grieving. The family of Oregetta Pace is devastated, saddened to lose their mother, who lived 97 incredible years, but disappointed they're now in a bitter battle with the provider of her life insurance policy. My biggest concern is why won't they talk to me? Yeah. I can't you can't get, even get them to answer I can't, the phone, I, really. And talk no, they to you. answer the phone, but I can't get past the receptionist. Okay. Years ago, this couple purchased a policy with what was then Golden State Mutual Insurance Company. It has since been taken over by another company, and for years, the payments have been made. In fact, one was just drawn from their mother's account right before her passing. That's Yet when they called to claim that money, they got nowhere. They always tell you to prepare yourself in advance. Yeah. And that's what my parents did. And for so it's not working out.
So I started making phone calls, talking with the new insurance company, and working to get this settled once and for all. They're now working to locate the policy and get this family the funds they deserve. Arrangements are being made by Cole Funeral Home, which was also involved in the process working to make this right, but unfortunately no one was able to get closure for this grieving family. And that payment needs to be made to the funeral home by next Thursday. We are told that by Monday, all of this should come together. Of course, it's something that we're going to stay on top of to make sure this family gets the money needed yeah. in order to have this funeral service next week. Mm. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. Terrible. All right, Hank. I do. All right, the Powerball jackpot is now at $935 million after no grand prize winner on Wednesday. That's the fifth largest in Powerball history. The next drawing is tomorrow night. Megan Woods joins us live. Megan, the odds for winning this one is one in 292.2 million. Yes, so the odds uh, aren't the best for winning, right? But I mean, who wouldn't want to buy a ticket and take a chance on it? So, and think about it. What if you win? Well, how do you keep all that money and uh, make it last, right? But then what do you spend it on? There's so many questions. We talk to some experts to get some answers. I mean, that is a lot. That is a lot of money. The first question is, did you buy a ticket? I'm going to buy 10. Go for it. The second is, what would you do if you won all that money? I'd buy a private island. Most, any bills, um, debts, and then uh, invest. Start a foundation. Well, I would have to give the church something, 10%. I'll be like, all right, I love y'all, but no, I won't let nobody know if I won either. If you don't see me, you know that I won. Emily Irwin over at Wells Fargo Bank says keeping any lottery win a secret is a good idea. Privacy equals safety and security. There are scammers, there are froster, fraudsters, there are predators who like to prey on individuals who come into sudden wealth, and it will look legitimate and valid. She suggests not signing that winning ticket, telling a max of two people in your trusted circle, and getting a financial advisor. Another thing to consider is to take the lump sum or annual payment. The deciding factor should be if you have strong financial habits. If by contrast you're someone who has difficulty with that, then it may be a safer and preferable option for you to take it on an annual basis because you know you're going to be getting that steady stream of income. And if you make a mistake in one year, you're going to have another year or decades of years to be able to rectify it. And these are valuable pointers, and not just for the Powerball, but, uh, you know, any lottery. She also says people who win, a lot of times they forget about the estate planning side of things. So that's another thing that you really want to remember. Reporting live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Okay, Megan, thanks. As Detroit prepares to host the NFL draft coming up next month, getting a nice tune-up with another big sports event that's in town this weekend. We're, of course, talking about the NCAA men's basketball tournament at Little Caesars Arena. Tonight, there are Sweet 16 games, and Sunday, it'll be the Elite Eight. Jacqueline Francis live at LCA for us tonight. Jacqueline, this is giving the city and its businesses a chance to really impress a lot of people from out of town. It is. This is a great day for this. The door is just open. The line is moving. we got to show you some of these outfits. Look at this Purdue fan here. She's got her train on her head. You came all the way from Indiana, you said, right? Yes, we did. Lots of people have been traveling from out of town. We've talked with fans from all four teams. That's Gonzaga, Purdue, Tennessee, and Creighton. People have come from all over the map to see their teams play. Now, when you ask them, who do you think is going to win? Of course, everyone says their team, but no one is as confident as the Purdue fans. Take a listen. What are you excited about? What are you looking forward to here tonight? A dominant performance by one of the greatest teams that we've ever had that's changed the university as a whole. I just came from Indiana. These guys came from Washington, D.C. We're here because we're the number one seed. We're going to rock this place. This is such great exposure for the city. Some people we've talked to said this is their first time to Detroit. So far, so good, they say. So it's really kind of a preview of what we're going to see in a couple of weeks when the NFL draft comes to town. So a lot of excitement. We're going to be here. There's two games tonight. One of them's not even going to start until 10 o'clock. So it's going to be a late night yeah. here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Reporting live outside of LCA, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Yeah, hopping Friday.
going to yeah. be good. Yeah, love it. Love how the sunshine's beaming down oh, on Jacqueline, yeah. too. A great day. Live look outside. Gorgeous. It's just about perfect for this Good Friday. Kim? Yeah, I was looking at the people in line to see what they're wearing because you see such a wide range this time exactly. of year where you're like, it's cold, it'll be cold when we leave, but do we really want to put on a big coat or we just want to do a hoodie? So people do all kinds of things you see this time of year. 53 degrees downtown. It's 50 in Howell, but as that sun sets just before 8 o'clock, those temps are going to start falling pretty quickly tonight. 51 in Mount Clemens. It's popped up to 50 in Pontiac. Low 50s at Metro Airport. You know, it's only about 3 or 4 degrees warmer right now than it was yesterday, but it feels warmer because the winds are not as strong as they were yesterday. So right now it's five degrees warmer out at the airport, four degrees warmer in Ann Arbor, Pontiac, Mount Clemens, and at City Airport, it's eight degrees warmer down in Monroe tomorrow. Well, we lose our sunshine and we replace it with some rain, unfortunately, during the morning hours, right when a lot of those Easter egg hunts are going on and it's just going to kind of be a soggy morning for us. But Easter's looking a little bit better and we'll have a sneak peek of opening day for the Tigers coming up as well.